Hello. I are the Inglorious Bird and I are here to present an epic lesson in physics. Specifically projectile motion. Lol. We are about the motion of a projectile and its relation to a gravity. Ignoring air resistance, we will explore the concept of projectile motion with the help of Jimmy. This is Jimmy. Jimmy wave. Jimmy are going to throw an object, the projectile, at a velocity, so we can use math to solve four things. Okay Jimmy throw. Okay. Jimmy is two meters tall. He threw the object at 30 meters per second. At an angle of 25 degrees. This we know, because I says so. We also know, that the gravitational constant of Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Using these informations, we will find out the maximum height of the object. The time at maximum height, i.e., the time it took the object to reach the maximum height. The horizontal distance the object traveled. The final time, i.e., the time it took to impact. The impact velocity. Let us begin with maximum height. Maximum height is the highest y value the object becomes equal to. To solve for the maximum height we list the things we know, our knowns, and the things we must find out, our unknowns. We know that Jimmy is 2 meters tall. We know that he throws the object at a 25 degree angle. We know that he throws the object at 30 meters a second. And we know that the gravitational constant is 9.8 meters per second squared. We start by knowing that the maximum height is equal to initial height added to vertical velocity multiplied by time to maximum height all added to one half the gravity multiplied by time to max height squared. Initial height is equal to 2 meters. Vertical velocity is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction which we can find with a little trigonometry. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 25 degrees is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction over 30 meters per second. So that the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to 30 multiplied by the sine of 25 degrees which is equal to 12.6785 meters per second. We also know that the gravitational constant which is 9.8 meters per second in Earth is negative because its vector is different than up. The only unknown we have is time at maximum height. To solve for time at maximum height, we discover that the trajectory is like a parabola, which is dictated by a slope. Slope in this case is equal to distance in the y direction over time. You see, when the slope of the object is zero, the object has reached maximum height. When this is the case, the maximum height is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction over the gravitational constant. Proving this relationship however, would require the use of derivatives, which would require calculus, which I do not know. So I will just plug in the values and solve for the time at maximum height, which is equal to 1.29373 seconds. Now that we have the time at maximum height, we plug it into the equation to solve for maximum height and find that the maximum height is equal to 10.2013 meters. To solve for distance we must know that distance is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by the final time. The initial velocity in the x direction can also be solved with a little trigonometry. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 25 degrees is equal to the velocity in the x direction over 30 meters per second. Now the only unknown we have is the final time. Final time is equal to time at impact. Had there been no initial height of 2 meters, we could have solved the final time by doubling the time at maximum height. However, in order to consider the 2 meters difference we will have to, you guessed it, solve using the final height equation. Final height, similar to the max height equation, is equal to the initial height plus the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by final time plus one half the gravity, which is a negative vector, multiplied by the final time squared. But you see, at the time the projectile impacts, the height is zero. So, now we will use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 multiplied by a multiplied by c all divided by 2 multiplied by a. We solve this mess and find that the final time is equal to 2.73661 seconds. We plug this final time into the distance equation and find that the distance is equal to 34.6962 meters. To solve for the impact velocity, we know that the impact velocity is equal to the final velocity. With the Pythagorean theorem, we can see that the final velocity is equal to the square root of the final velocity in the x direction squared plus the final velocity in the y direction squared. The final velocity in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction, which we already calculated to be 27.1892 meters per second. The final velocity in the y direction is equal to the velocity at maximum height plus the gravity, which is a negative vector, multiplied by the difference between the final time at and the time at maximum height. The velocity at maximum height is equal to zero, 
because when distance equals maximum height, velocity is then equal to zero. Minus 9.8 meters per second is of course a negative vector. We have already calculated final time and time at maximum height. We plug in these values and find that the final velocity in the y direction is equal to minus 14.140 to meters per second. This makes sense, because the object is traveling at a negative vector. Now that have the final velocity in the y direction, we plug it into the final velocity equation and find that the final velocity is equal to 30.6297 meters per second.